And then if you're braving the cold to attend a bonfire this weekend, Michaela Kiafa has the perfect meal to warm you up when you get home. And you say this is really, really simple and easy. Yeah, I mean, I was a little bit, do I do it as a recipe? Because, again, it is so easy. You can prep it in about Although 10 minutes. Although it did cause a little bit of a discussion with your mother this morning. It did, it did. It did. Um, I've added croutons to this recipe, which okay. isn't the traditional method. Um, but I just think the softness of the dish with the crunch at the end. It's a texture thing, isn't it? I know what you mean, because it's like soup when you dunk crusty bread in. Yeah, exactly. Did you that. talk her round in the end? Or I did. Just... And the other thing I think that's brilliant is it all, mm. it's all in one dish. So for me, bonfire night, traditionally you can have like jack potatoes out, outside. This I love because it's so warming. It's like a stew in a bowl. It's really good. Um, the flavours are incredible. And the, the, the hero of it mm. is um, Italian sausages. So. If you buy a good quality Italian sausage, so they're a coarse sausage with a bit of fennel in, a bit pricier, but it's still, this whole meal works out at under £2 a portion. And you can get them at the supermarket, because yeah. I keep seeing that. You can. Can and you buy really, really cheap sausages? And you can buy really, really drop cheap. Drop a bit of fennel in it as you're cooking it. Yeah, and you, you can buy really cheap, and you can, if you want to do cheap, get fennel seeds, crush them a little mm. bit and pop them in with the onions, you're sort of creating the same effect. And then it comes out at less than a pound a portion. So this is like a hero, 10 minutes in the kitchen, because who really wants to be in the kitchen for hours? Yeah. And you've got this hearty one-pot sausage, sausage stew. The mm. so. fennel in the sausage is so good, yeah. though, by the way. Like, it is worth it. It's it is a game-changer. Oh, yeah, no, it's good. It's and like a lot of Italian cooking, it starts with a fried onion. Yeah. So that's what I've got in here. But what I'm going to add to that is two tablespoons of tomato puree mm -hmm. at this point. So this often goes in later. Mm -hmm. And this would be the point, if you don't have fennel in your sausages, to just crush a few fennel seeds and add them in here. And all I'm going to do into that is add my sausages. Now... These sausages, ideally, you want to remove the skin. Right. Um, so you just score down them, and then it peels off quite easily, and then you chop them into chunks. And essentially, so a lot of Italian meatballs are made with sausage meat. Mm. So this is also a bit of a kind of a, you know, meatball stew. Oh, okay. You know, it's a really kind of a crowd So teaser. you could make them into little balls. Well, they basically are, look. You just chop them without right. the skin yep. and save and you... It. And that's it. And they're going to go in there and you're going to brown them off. That's really nice. And I mean, this is the hardest part of the recipe. If, if I tell you that's pretty much the recipe, you know, that's kind of your time. So what's your seasoning in here then? A seasoning is just salt and pepper. Really? Yeah, it's the, it's the flavour from, from the those sausages. fennels yeah. that, um, that really comes out. And so that's why it is worth trying to find. It really is, things. I think. And I think what you'll see now is these are going to brown. And you wait right until the point. You want them to go give, get a little bit of colour. Um, so not necessarily cook through? Uh, no, you don't need to cook them through because we're going to add stock now to this. And what I particularly love about this recipe is, you know, because I was thinking, oh, it's so simple, you know, can I even call this a recipe? Um, a lot of Italian cooking is simple. If you think of a bruschetta, it's one of the simple, most traditional kind of Italian, mm -hmm. but it's chopped tomatoes with garlic over bread. Yeah. It, it all originated from kind of peasant dishes, but actually... And it's that thing about having really good ingredients. So you can afford to keep it simple because the ingredients just exactly. sort of speak for themselves. And it's that. I think it's in the simplicity that the magic really happens. Mm. And so, look at the colours there. So, what I'm going to add on to that... Mash one about of those potatoes 800... in the sauce. Yeah, it's, it's really unbelievable. amazing. <laughs> so, into that, I've got some stock. What stock? Have you so, I've used chicken, but again, you know, keeping it simple at home, 800 ml of hot water and a crumble of stock cube in would do the do job I... as well. OK. Yeah, absolutely. And look at the... What I love about this is the richness. And a traditional bolognese is, never, is not even done with tin tomatoes. It's done with the tomato puree because it's got this richness. Really? Yeah, yeah, a traditional bolognese. And it's stock or just...? Um, stock, yep. Yeah. So they is in that it, the it, same throughout the whole of Italy? Well, no, I mean, you can go to one neighbour to the next and yeah. they'll say completely different things. But I've been to Bologna and Bologna is where kind of bolognese originates yeah. from. And the majority there don't put tins of tomatoes in. They use, stock, they use um, tomato puree. Right. And is it... Um, um, beef mints? Uh, or is it not? Beef traditionally, It, is, it would yeah. be beef. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. So, mm. there we go. So, that's the kind of basis. Now, I'm going to add to that these chopped um, potatoes. So, again, really, really economical dish. And that's going to sit and bubble away 
you know, for probably 20, 30 so minutes. So those aren't par cooked? No, nope, the... these go straight in like that. And again, you know, this is like a total crowd pleaser with my family and the kids. You can kind of do fireworks outside and have this bubbling away. Season with salt and pepper. And the one thing I am doing, just to kind of zhuzh it up a bit, and this is the big debate with mum and the family, is I'm going to add some croutons. You don't have to do this, but I, I don't know what you think, mm. but... Yeah, I know they are really good. I think it's pretty good. This is great also, nice... like, a day or two Soaking after, because the, 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 um, the potatoes soak up the sauce, mm. and I like then the, the crunch of the of crouton. The mm. Yeah, and I am li I'm quite honestly, this is stale bread in here. You drizzle it with the kind of... You don't want to use sliced bread. Mm. This is where croutons can go wrong. You want kind of a chunky bread, so a baguette, yeah, or a sourdough. Be quite generous with the olive oil mm -hmm. over the top. A little bit of salt. And that's going to go in the oven. And I've got one in the oven, if I show you. Mmm. And does that, um, stop just thicken up as you're yep. cooking? Well, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do right at the end. But onto these, I'm going to put a little bit of parmesan. Again, mm. like that, that costing of a pound a portion takes into account this olive oil and parmesan. Yeah. And that's going to go back in just to give a little bit of a cheesiness. And if I show you the final dish now, mm. this is where, have a look, in there, mm -hmm. you can either leave it nice and brothy, OK, like that, add a little bit more liquid, or I prefer to thicken it a tiny mm -hmm. bit. So I've got a tiny bit of corn flour in there. And you just stir this with a bit of cold water to get any lumps out. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Yeah. And add this just before you serve. And it won't make it thick, but it'll just give that bit of body to, mm. the, to the kind of the stew. And if I'm... Yeah, I think this, you can't really go wrong. It's just so comforting. Yeah. Hearty. Mm. And look it's at really that. Nice. I mean, who... You can't go wrong with a sausage, right? And then a potato. Very And true. that lovely sauce. In the mix. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> and then you put the croutons over the top and then when the they're ready to go. Over the top. They're gonna, they should be done, actually. Mm -mm -mm. Little, they're just going to give it a little bit of cheesiness over the top. There we go. Look I made that. a sausage pie the other day. Did you? I had sausages left over and thought, what am I going to do with these? So I just put mushrooms and sausages and then I had a bit of old pastry left over. It was a bit, a bit crumbly. It was, all of, it was all a bit old. Um, but I'm still sausages here. Sausages are very versatile. <laughs> but it, and, good. and into this, you could add mushroom and you could also add a bean, you know? So, again, if different people of the family like different mm. little treats, you a mushroom in here would just also do the same as the um, potato, soak yeah. up all those juices. Thank Amazing. you very much. Thank, Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, for details of today's recipe and more delicious ideas from our chefs, download the free This Morning app. Bye.